discussing uh, cardiovascular pharmacology, particularly right now, uh, Bosentan is a drug we're discussing, also called Traclear. So Bosentan is an endothelin antagonist. I'll kind of explain how this works. So, <clears throat> well, first of all, I'm going to tell you when you're going to use this. You're going to use Bosentan in the case of pulmonary arterial hypertension. So somebody has pulmonary arterial hypertension, you can give them Bosentan to treat that. So let me talk about what this endothelin is and how it works. So endothelin is, if you look inside of your, um, your blood vessels, you have the endothelial layer, these endothelial cells on the inside here, uh, they have something, they release something called endothelin. Okay, this and endothelin has three forms, uh, ET1, ET2, ET3, I'm assuming, but ET1 is the one that we're particularly talking about because ET1 is the one that's most relevant to vascular tone. There's also receptors, the different receptors. There's uh, ETA and there's ETB receptors that ET1 will bind to. So ET1 binds to, uh, if it binds to an ETA receptor, these are located in the vascular smooth muscle and they are bound or they're associated with G-coupled proteins and, and associated also with phospholipase C, it appears. And essentially what this does is when ETA is bound, it's going to cause vasoconstriction. Okay? So when, when endothelin 1 uh, interacts with ETA receptors, Vasoconstriction tightens things down. We do not want that in the case of pulmonary arterial hypertension. However, ETB does pretty much the exact opposite. Let me explain how this works. ETB receptors, so an endothelin 1 binds to an ETB receptor. These are located also on the endothelial cells. They go in, work with G-coupled proteins, phospholipase C, and it ends up releasing something called ENOS. ENOS ultimately results in NO, nitric oxide, being released in, this, in the cell. Nitric oxide, when it's released, is going to ultimately interact with some cyclic GMP specific protein kinases that are going to activate myosin light chain phosphatase and also prevent the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And let me explain why that's relevant, okay? So inside of your veins, you have a muscular, smooth muscle layer. And this smooth muscle, when it gets tightened, it decreases the circumference, and when it's loose, it opens up. This smooth muscle is composed of actin filaments and myosin filaments. These myosin filaments do not work unless they have phosphates on them. And they don't get phosphates on them unless myosin light chain kinase, I remember kinase is kind because it gives phosphates, kind kinase. And so they don't get phosphates to become active and tighten down unless uh, myosin light chain kinase gives them one of these phosphates from the ATP. And myosin light chain, myosin light chain kinase is not active unless calmodulin activates it. But calmodulin cannot be active and activate myosin light chain kinase unless calmodulin has calcium bound to it. And calcium is not inside the cell in large numbers unless it's released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum or from an extracellular source. So inside the sarcoplasmic, so I'll work backwards now. Inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum or extracellular, there's some calcium. The calcium comes in. It binds to calmodulin. Calmodulin and calcium then can activate myosin light chain kinase. Myosin light chain kinase then can take an ATP, pull off one of the phosphates, and put it, put it on the myosin, thus activating the myosin. Now the my, here's the actin. Now the myosin with these little heads can bind and pull its way down, tightening down the smooth muscles within the veins or the arteries and constricting, causing vasoconstriction. So how does nitrous oxide tie into all this? How does bosentan tie into all this? Quick recap, okay? Bosentan, what it is, 
is it Bosentan, I guess let me make sure I read this and, and don't uh, describe it improperly. Bosentan is uh, a, uh, it says, is a, so back to it says, um, <laughs> it is a competitive antagonist of both ETA and ETB receptors, but the net effect is vasodilation. So it is a competitive antagonist. So it's competing for the binding sites for ETA and ETB receptors. And so ultimately, though, it causes vasodilation. So here's how it works. So going back a little bit, you've got endothelin. Endothelin gets released from those endothelial cells. Endothelin has a couple different forms. The one that's important to us is ET1. Normally, what will happen is ET1 will go, and it's going to bind to an ETA and an ETB receptor. When it binds to an ETA receptor, it's coupled to a G protein, G coupled protein, which works through phospholipase C and causes vasoconstriction. What Bosentan does is it essentially, from the sound here, if it's a competitive antagonist, it's going to bind, it's going to basically take up this site so that ET1 can't get to, to the ETA and ETB receptors. Okay. Now, granted, um, ETB actually looked like it caused vasodilation, but the net, so, so in a sense, it's kind of doing two things. One's vasodilation, one's, one's uh, vasoconstriction, but ultimately what this prevents by being a competitive antagonist is it prevents the, um, it prevents, you know, this vasoconstriction from occurring from the ETA receptor being bound.